Welcome to another episode of Full Retard. I'm your guest host, that crazy butterfly lady. Today we have a story from r slash entitled parents. Let's get going. Toxic family drama. When I moved back home after college to live with my dad and my grandma, my mom somehow found out about my grandma living in the States. For context, my parents are divorced and my grandma and mom are estranged. Ever since then, I periodically got questions from my mom over the status of my grandma. When is she leaving? Has she left? Eventually, I left her a clue that my grandma would be leaving in March, only to be asked in March if my grandma had already left. The week earlier, she had asked my dad the same question. When asked that time, I suggested her to reach my grandma's foreign phone number if she wanted to. After my mom became upset and hung up on me, I went on a couple of long text messages exchange to try to clear the air, although to no avail. This Mother's Day, we spoke for the first time since this incident. She attributed my low self-insight and lack of mindfulness to weak social skills and mild autism. She prefaced the discussion by stating that I might get upset over what she said and alleged that she felt attacked by my suggestion. She also downplayed or denied my role as a third party and compared the situation to asking colleagues if the boss is here. So I reminded her that contrary to estranged family members, employees have an active working relationship with their bosses. When I asked her how she felt attacked, she used my question to prove her point about my deficiencies in social skills and linked it to a prior conversation about mild autism. In repeating the points I stated over text, I alleged that I did not want to get involved as a third party. Repeated questions about person B are best directed to person B instead of person C, and it's important for me to close past chapters. She felt that I could have rephrased my answer better to avoid being insensitive. Person A, my mom, and person B, my grandma, clearly don't get along. So my mom believed she had no reason to go to grandma. She also didn't know that asking such a simple question would result in my kind of reaction. Finally, to speed up the conversation, my mom asked if I felt uncomfortable over her question. When I agreed with her, she related my feelings to the infrequent dishonesty of my dad and the mysterious personalities of my dad and grandma. She promised that she wouldn't ask me any more questions about my family. If I were to vent to her again about my dad's side of the family, she would not be an active listener. My mom felt there was a disconnect in my behavioral patterns from the time I started venting to the time I stopped doing so. When I clarified that there comes a time when we stop talking about a particular topic, she rebuted it. Death of someone usually brings an end to a discussion, she alleged. Fair enough. But even if a family member were still alive, that does not mean we need to talk about that person. I absolutely despised her accusation of my dad's side of the family trying to drive a wedge in our relationship. I tried to play it fair by saying that both sides of the family want me to have a better relationship with each other. Where would you draw the line between being mindful and not taking responsibility for the feelings of other people? I am just tired of getting into family drama and have been trying to find ways to gray rock my possessive mom. I know what it takes to gray rock her, but it's hard to keep my distance from her when we already are already distant. I thought about limiting the time of all future phone calls, especially for holidays. The truth is, I don't want to see her again. Right now, I'm just trying to give her what she wants without having to visit her, like agreeing to FaceTime sessions. What other strategies can I use to gray rock her? And based on the way the conversation unfolded, did I lose the chance to hold her accountable? We both agreed that I was uncomfortable, but she never took any accountability for her own actions. Well, this is a hard one. But at some point in your life, you have to look out for yourself. And coming from someone that cut her mother off and didn't even see her even before she, right before she died, I had to put it into context. She didn't want to see me. She wanted to see my son. And my son didn't want to see her. So I didn't go see her. And I didn't force my son to go see her. Um, because my mother was kind of rude to him. Anyways, thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, and follow us.